So in this presentation, we explain how to achieve better data on gender in trade by integrating official statistics and ask if the Nordic countries have achieved gender equality in trade. So before going any further, let us pause for a minute to reply to this question, which is really a fundamental one. Why do we care? There's of course a long literature that analyzes international trade, multinational enterprises and firm heterogeneity, which provides uh, insights to a variety of topics. The results basically underline the fact that globalization has diverse and complex effects on people, all depending on the context and circumstance. So in order to have a systematic assessment on the, any of these, it is important to have official statistics that are sufficiently integrated and allow better multivariate analysis on these topics. So specific to this session, we know from the literature and by the mere fact that men and women tend to concentrate into different industries. Uh, trade and trade policy will therefore surely have uh, gender differentiated effects. Of course, in order, to have, uh, in order to achieve the goals of sustainable development, we would need to consider and understand these uh, gender differentiated effects. As trade is really the fundamental driver of modern economies. It cannot be analyzed in isolation, even in official statistics. We need to incorporate something we call a research mindset and be able to present data with breakdowns that consider these new policy areas and emerging needs. So what I'm presenting here is the UNCTAD framework, which is a useful tool to that end, as it presents the different issues or angles on how to look at the problem. It accounts for a broader set of indicators, breaking down the issue to preconditions. So what are the factors behind equal participation to trade and to outcomes and impacts, which delineate short and long-term effects. All in all, they're facing a difficult problem, even in deciding what should we measure exactly, what definition should be used and so on. But we have to start from somewhere. And this is why we built on previous work on microdata linking, which are often done together with the other statistical offices, in particular in the Nordic countries. We have built in the Nordic countries a database which links together many statistical sources, which we view as a very nice basis for providing new statistics that respond to emerging data needs. In particular, the system we have built incorporates investments, uh, performance data of enterprises, uh, births and deaths of enterprises, and international trade data. The database also incorporates employees of the enterprises with their characteristics. So all of these are linked with business register information and a unique enterprise ID so that these units can be followed over time. So what we have established is the ability to provide a better accounting of uh, heterogeneity of firms, that is, the actors behind international trade. And we have spent quite a bit of time in analyzing trading status, so how the firm is participating in trade. We have analyzed size, because different sizes have implications in job creation, and in ability to export. We have analyzed ownership issues because dependencies through enterprise group relations domestically and abroad influences the ability to trade and availability of resources. We have looked at age to account for life cycle effects and the process of um, creative destruction. So next, I'll present our newest experimental statistics, which are indeed a result from a project we did together with the, the OECD. And these statistics allow us to respond to some of the gender issues raised earlier. So what we have been doing is to develop something uh, people refer to as the, the extended supply use tables. 
uh, these tables incorporate the microdata to supply use tables using the breakdowns shown in the previous slide. Uh, through that, we can derive the input-output tables and the production function of the economy. And this allows, allows us to derive uh, very rich indicators on the role of gender in trade. I encourage everyone to have a look at the report shown in there, which uh, provides uh, all the necessary details to replicate this exercise. So with this uh, kind of a lengthy uh, background on the methodology and reasoning, we can have a look at a few key indicators. The first figure here shows really the basic uh, reason why we can expect that uh, trade will have a gender differentiated effect. We have there ordered the industries with the highest uh, female to male participation rates. The figure shows that the highest uh, female to male ratios are found in residential and social work industries, uh, personal activities and human health services. And these are not the highest paid industries in the economy, nor are they uh, particularly open to trade. Now this one is uh, fairly complex, but it is a key figure. It shows the jobs embodied in domestic value added, uh, exports by gender and firm trading status in 2018. So there are directly embodied and indirectly embodied jobs uh, in those bars side by side. Direct refers to direct participation to trade, i.e. that the firm, firm in question is trading itself. Indirect refers to the fact that the firm is participating indirectly as part of the value chain or as a supplier to the exporting firm. We learned that women are underrepresented in two-way traders that are directly trading, as around 58% of jobs found in two-way traders depend on domestic value-added exports, but only 17% of the employees directly dependent on GVCs are women. So accounting for indirect GVC participation will sharpen this analysis. As women are slightly better represented in indirect exports in non-traders, as many non-exporting enterprises employ relatively more women and are in the upstream of the value chain of uh, exporting firms. So the final figure, it provides a snapshot of a particularly interesting analysis on the pay gap discussion between women and men. Pay gaps are sizable overall as measured by wage ratio of men to women, but they seem to be able to be the largest in medium skills and low skills jobs in non-trading firms and in importing firms, while they are somewhat smaller in two-way traders and exporters. So highly skilled women face the smallest pay gaps in exporters. This indicates that while international trade may exacerbate the pay differences between women and men at the aggregate economy level, uh, due to segregation, women who are working in exporting industries are relatively better off than their counterparts, uh, producing goods and services for the domestic economy only. So we are ready to conclude. So statistical offices can do more to help policymakers by integrating micro and macro data. Uh, these are cost-effective ways to produce new statistics. We do not need to collect uh, new data by introducing surveys, but the question is really about uh, investing in statistical infrastructures which allow linking of data across uh, statistical domains. We have seen interesting insights from Finland when it comes to the analysis of trade and gender. Uh, segregation has visible consequences on income inequalities and this seems to work uh, through international trade. As gender seems to have a pretty good explanatory power, it is a good uh, breakdown to present in official statistics. And needless to say, we would like to make that explanatory power disappear. Thank you very much uh, for your attention.